Dracula, The Walking Dead, Frankenstein, The Picture of Dorian Gray, Corpse Bride, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Sweeney Todd, The Woman in Black, a wide range of entertainment that includes books, TV series and films. And they're all part of the same genre, one that is characterised by darkness, fear, mystery and the supernatural. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Mr. Watson and I'm a secondary school English teacher and tutor. On this channel, I share with you guidance, advice, tips and tricks to help you take your English skills to the next level. In this video, we're gonna be looking at Gothic literature, specifically the key features and telltale signs of a text that belongs to this genre. So let's start by looking at where the phrase Gothic literature actually comes from. Well, the name refers to the Gothic architecture of the European Middle Ages. Gothic architecture is characterized by long pointed arches, flying exterior buttresses, long stained glass windows, ribbed vaults and spires. This type of architecture and building design became characteristics of the settings that were used quite commonly in the early Gothic novels, which is where the term Gothic literature originated from. So now that we know where the name Gothic literature actually comes from, let's take a look at some of the elements and characteristics that are often used in stories that belong to this genre. Stories that are in the Gothic literature genre often include the following. Evil settings. Places that inspire fear and darkness. Evil within humans. Anything that involves people wanting to cause harm to others. For instance, lies and deceit, violence, curses, poisoning, etc. These stories also tend to relate to fin de siècle, which means anything to do with the end of a century, particularly the 19th century, which was the 1800s. They tend to deal with change. So this could refer to a change in personality, a change in physical appearance, a change in attitudes or a change in setting. Something that's quite well known about Gothic texts is that they often explore fear. So anything that's considered gruesome, ghastly, morbid or dangerous. Along with fear, they also tend to explore tension. So anything that builds up suspense. And stories belonging to the Gothic genre can also fit into the category of weird fiction, which basically contains stories that are out of the ordinary, unusual and strange. So now let's have a look at some of the key tropes of Gothic literature. And we're gonna look specifically at four of these tropes, setting, character, plot, and the supernatural. Gothic stories often take place in bleak or abandoned places, such as forests, castles, and cemeteries, etc. The characters in these stories often experience physical torment, for example, pain, spasms, or paralysis, or they experience psychological torment, such as anxiety, depression, or guilt. And in some of these stories, the characters experience both psychological and physical torment. Sucks to be them. The plot of Gothic stories often includes fear, violence, and the macabre, which means anything gruesome and related to death. And the supernatural refers to things and creatures that are considered otherworldly, such as vampires, ghosts, zombies, and werewolves. Okay, so now I'm just gonna give you some examples of some Gothic literature from the different eras. You probably will have heard of some of these, and you might even be studying one or two of them. Or you might just have an interest in Gothic fiction and be interested in reading more about it. So some of the earliest Gothic literature includes The Castle of Otranto by Horace Walpole, The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe, and Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Later Gothic literature includes The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson, The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, and Dracula by Bram Stoker. And a couple of texts that came more in the Victorian era when Gothic literature wasn't necessarily as popular as it had been include Tales of the Uncanny and Supernatural by Algernon Blackwood and The Call of Cthulhu by H.P. Lovecraft. And some examples of some modern stories that have been influenced by Gothic literature of the past includes The Woman in Black by Susan Hill, The Shining by Stephen King, Beloved by Toni Morrison, and Linden Hills by Gloria Naylor. So there we go, a quick and easy introduction to Gothic fiction. So hopefully now you'll be able to spot the key features and common tropes of stories belonging to the Gothic genre. Now, if you're a student that wants to strive for the highest amount of marks possible in your assessments and exams, then you need to start thinking like a grade nine student when you're analyzing the texts. Something that I talk about in this video here. So if that sounds like you, why don't you go and check this video out now? 
If you've taken any value away from this video, please let me know by leaving a like and maybe even a comment below. Other than that, thanks a lot for watching and remember to work hard, learn lots and change the world. Bye for now.